The patch notes for Stellaris's LEM update have been released. And LEM itself will be releasing next Tuesday, the 14th of September. LEM is the 3.1 first update from the custodians team in Stellaris, um, who are looking back at existing systems, old expansion packs, stuff that's already in the game and seeing how they can improve it, refresh it, make it more interesting. And there are a lot of patch notes. Uh, so, 3.1 LEM update. These are the headline features. We have the selectable tradition trees. There's going to be more than seven tradition trees, and you'll be able to pick which one you want, so all empires will not be the same. And so, yeah, there's new stuff coming with Nemesis, um, which is related to espionage. There's new stuff coming with Apocalypse, which is related, uh, related to murdering people. Um, I say um a lot. There is um, some new mercantile tradition, which is sort of mega core type stuff, but it's in the base game. And there's 11 total tradition trees if you have everything. The plantoid species pack is being refreshed and expanded. There are new traits being added. Um, and you can make your own Gaia worlds or turn food into alloys. Humanoids um, is getting an expansion to its content with a clone army. Um, who have an interesting um, population growth mechanic or become a master crafter or various others. Necroids are having some tweaks. They're not having massive expansion changes, just some tweaks to make some parts of it a bit interesting. And the others, just numerous, numerous other changes. So this is version 3.1. Um, the Stanislaw Lem three features at the top. So Plantoids, first of all, are getting some changes. They've added a civic called Idyllic Bloom available to Plantoids and Fungoids, which will basically let you put a building on your planet and turn it into a Gaia world. Gaia worlds for everyone. This means you can get Gaia worlds without being very lucky and without having to take an Ascension perk to do it. Um, it's just if you're a plantoid or a fungoid you can take this civic and this is now something you can do. Uh, there are three traits for um, them. Phototrophic which significantly reduces, I think completely removes, um, but com significantly reduces in any case the energy cost for plants um, and fungoids um, and their energy upkeep. Um, radiotrophic which does the same thing except if you're on tomb worlds it's even better. Still missing is a way to actually make Tomb Worlds unless you also happen to be playing one of the Genocide Empires and want to blast the planet from above before settling it. Uh, budding, which is additional way, it's a boost to pop growth. It's, I don't know, people who use gardens and go outside will understand what budding is, I'm sure. It's a plant thing. Uh, catalytic processing civics for all government types, which is the function for one which will let you turn um, food into alloys, so that's good. Uh, one of the prescripted empires is now using idyllic bloom in place of inward perfection. Uh, if you own the plantoid species pack, new, new bale will get phototrophic, and if you own the plantoids, then the Niblack will all get radiotrophic. Humanoids added three civics, master crafters, which are. Um, wow. Uh, consumer Goods Plus, Pleasure Seekers. I don't know the specifics of Pleasure Seekers. I think I missed that one in a dev diary. I should go back and find out. Clone Army Origin. Basically, you will have clone vats. All of your population growth for that species comes from those clone vats. You cannot survive without them. You cannot grow without them. And there is an empire hard cap on how many you can build. How that will work, we'll have to see. Like, if you like, it's gonna put some interesting absolute caps to the number of that species you can have potentially, which you know, population is king. So, that should be interesting to see. Synthetic Dawn, um, the machine intelligences, rogue servitors can take our ecology project, and basically, rogue servitors can get Qunopolises now. Qunopolises, a Qunopoli, um, and they have sanctuary ecologies which can house biotrophies. Um, Apocalypse adds the unyielding tradition tree, which is to say, fight me, I dare you. Um, subversive cults, no longer, which is the criminal 
church. It's the criminal church uh, megacore type, I believe. Um, no longer have access to the Temple of Prosperity, instead gaining the Subversive Shrine. Uh, Ancient Relics has three new archaeology sites added for it. We don't know what they are, but I look forward to all of these. Um, one day, Criminal Megacores will be good to play. Uh, Lithoids uh, extended the anomaly event chain for certain Lithoid empires. Okay, Necroids, there's some substantial-ish changes here. Reanimated Armies Civic has been renamed to Reanimators. They can now reanimate biological leviathans. The big ones with like 40 to 50k fleet power on their own that you need a whole fleet to go and take down. And then you can bring it back to life under your own control. Also, when they are... When your armies are in a fight with each other, you have a chance for any army, enemy army you kill, you have a chance to immediately reanimate them. And they face on your side now. Um, as was once mentioned in a Doctor Who episode, I believe it was, um, Earth's key strategic weakness is the number of dead it has. Um, necromancy. Uh, necrophage origin is now available for hive mines. Hive necrophages, what could possibly go wrong? Nemesis has a new subterfuge tradition tree for espionage. It'll be interesting to see various tradition perks that were already in the game have been moved around, switched up. Some of them have had functions changed, but there's four total, I believe, new tradition trees. Um, no, there's harmony. So some of the swaps have been added as additional. So for the exact details will be seen. Um, some of it is in fact, like, we'll see what happens. Tradition trees are selectable now. You have access to more than seven different trees, but you can only ever have seven active trees. So yeah, here we are. Adaptability, synchronicity, and versatility traditions are their own tradition trees, rather than being swaps. Diplomacy and adaptability are both available to basically everyone, um, and are not exclusive from each other. And Mercantile is in the base game. This is in addition to the um, Nemesis and Apocalypse ones. Uh, the layout of Alpha Centauri is more scientifically accurate. Uh, scientific accuracy is, of course, key when you can take psionic ascension and build an engine to rip apart reality. Um, visuals of the Sea of Consciousness star system. I'm not sure that's one I've ever actually encountered. Visuals, good. Uh, you can queue construction of starbase buildings that require certain modules before those modules have completed construction. Yes! Ow. Yes! So when you start building your anchorages, you can also immediately tell it to build the um, naval office that expands anchorage capacity instead of having to wait until you've built one of them. It's example there, when you're building trade hubs, you can get the off-world trading company queued on the basis of what's... Like, the buildings will take into account stuff already in the building queue for its prerequisites. Uh, void Dweller Empires with species that eat food now actually start with food. Good. Two new archaeology sites added to the base game. More archaeology sites, especially if they're good ones, are always interesting. I haven't mentioned any new relics, so I don't imagine there are going to be any of the big chains. Um, we'll see. Um, balance changes. There's a lot to go through, by the way. But balance changes. Sectors, released as vassals for megacores, are now released as oligarchies with merchant guild civic and one or two randoms, depending on their technology level. Um, so you cannot just make an army an army? A galaxy of megacores by conquering and releasing as vassals. Uh, the science challenge in a federation takes greater account of the actual relative technological standing when it's working out the winner. So actually being good at science will actually help you there. As I think I mentioned, reanimators country defeats an organic army in battle with a 1 in 3 chance of creating a new undead army. Like, it doesn't seem like much, but 1 in 3 is substantial, potentially. Especially if you're attacking with, um, if you have a slave rebellion, for example. Like, they spawn a lot of armies on their planet, so they've got like 20, 30 armies. That's potentially quite a lot of armies you're getting out of that. And there's no indication that you don't get to keep them. It's not like they fight on your side and then collapse again, it doesn't say that. It's, you have new armies, which you well and have to pay upkeep for. Don't know exactly how long it will be. They're undead, so I don't imagine you really need to feed them or anything. We'll see. Um, the animators no longer need to research any text before they can build their necromancy building, which, you know, makes sense. The building now gives two necromancers instead of one, and they produce two extra each, two, plus two each extra society and physics, but less defensive armies. So, more science, less defense. 
Okay. Uh, increased chance of pops escaping necrophage purging to 25%. There's always been a small chance when you're doing a necrophage purge. There's always been a small chance that pops will escape and flee the empire. Um, that is now more likely to happen. One in four, which is something you may want to take account of when doing population calculations. The Void Dweller Twait. Twait? The Void Dweller trait now provides a pop output bonus of 15% on habitables and a pop output penalty of minus 15 on non artificial worlds. Ring worlds have neither a bonus or a penalty. Uh, also, a minus 30% happiness penalty on non artificial worlds. This is to resolve the issue there's been where Void Dweller trait made itself into two different traits, a positive and a negative. So all you had to do was gene mod and remove the negative trait, and Void Dweller was literally nothing but goodness everywhere and forever. This means you can no longer circumvent that. Uh, stability modifier from a memorialist building has been moved to the job for the memorialist um, civic. Death cult sacrifice bonuses depend much more on the percentage of your population you've just put to death rather than the sheer number of sacrifices, uh, which means you'll have a much bigger impact in the early game uh, where you're more likely to be... Like, when you have 100, 200 populations, whatever, the odds of you sub sub um, sacrificing more than a couple of percent of them are relatively low. Maybe you'll hit by percent, whereas early on you make a sacrifice it's potentially two or three pops out of 30, potentially, so percentage will be taken into account. Uh, the number of mortal initiate jobs from upgraded buildings have been reduced to two and three from three and five, so it's just gone with one, two, three, as our one, three, five progression. Um, because um, with the changes to pop growth and such, um, five pops per planet per decade is expensive. Uh, Beacon of Liberty used to give 15% extra unity. It now also gives minus 15% Empire's fall from population. Um, people will cause less paperwork. Imperial Cult gave you plus one edict. It's now plus two, doubled in effectiveness. Um, which, if you're playing an Imperial Empire already, is I think makes you up to five edicts at once with no admin penalty. Which, compared to like Democrat. Uh, democratic empires at the moment where it's just one that is substantial given it's a one-time activation cost there's no running upkeep beyond whatever specific changes happen to whatever that's substantial uh imperial um empires are looking a bit more popular uh idealistic foundation gave plus five happiness that's doubled to plus ten percent i should probably say plus ten percent happiness environmentalist used to be minus ten percent consumer goods upkeep is now minus twenty again doubled Parliamentary system gave plus 25 percent influent faction influence is now plus 40 percent. Efficient bureaucracy was plus 10 percent. Admin cap is now plus 20 percent. Um, nationalistic zeal was minus 10 percent war exhaustion gain and minus 10 percent claim cost. It's now minus 20 percent war exhaustion and minus 15 percent claim cost. Functional architecture minus 10 percent building and district cost and upkeep and plus one building slot. It's now um, minus 10, no, minus 15% building and district cost, plus two building slots, but there's no upkeep production. Um, subspace FAs um, is, was plus 15% naval capacity. It's now plus 20% ship speed and the 15% naval capacity. So it's a bigger boost. Uh, divided attention is plus 10% admin cap, doubled to plus 20, as with uh, issue bureaucracy. Constructo bot was um, has been copied as well from the functional architecture, so it's lost its upkeep production and it's had its increase on the co or decrease of the costs and more building slots. Slaver guilds reduced the enslaved population from 40% to 30. Indentured assets does the same thing. Technocracy added one consumer goods upkeep to scientist jobs that create unity because of technocracy. Basically, a lot of the civics have been gone through, and have most of most of them have been given a buff to, you know, in many cases it's a doubling or a bit less, uh, just a buff to the perks they give, some tweaks. Basically, makes a lot of the ones that, let's be fair, people very often don't bother taking, um, have just been made slightly more attractive, especially that subspace e phase one. Like 15% naval capacity is good. 15% naval capacity and ship speed. I like. Um, 
Goes back to influence the admin caps for those who take those. That Imperial Cult one, though, that could be interesting. That's a production booster. Technocracy has technically been nerfed. It's now more expensive to maintain your scientist jobs, um, which is worth keeping in mind. Um, so that's a thing to keep in mind for your technocracies. Non-homicidal necrophages no longer start with two extra props. Uh, Purify over the swarm ones do because keep it because during their purge, um, that will lose a few pops out of that, so you don't get a bonus there. Necrophages can now only have now only have stone, bronze, or iron age primitives as their guaranteed planets, um, and have more defense armies than you would have expected previously. Uh, the Elevation Chamber for Necrophage no longer gives you a planet stability bonus. Um, reduce the Labor Guild's and Engine Servitude Slave percentages from 40% to 35%. I think we already had that. Cool. Uh, some condition perks. Um, open market diplomatic condition has moved to mercantile. Inside of trading diplomatic condition moved to mercantile. Makes sense. Secured shipping's diplomatic condition has been removed, and the effect has moved to mercantile traditions. Three new traditions, specifics of which are not here. Added for diplomacy, diplomatic networking, direct diplomacy, and eminent diplomats. The bulwark, bulwark, bulwark of harmony, whatever, tradition moved to unyielding, and has been replaced to harmonious directives, increasing the edict cap by plus one. Mind and Body Harmony Tradition increases the Leader Skill Cap by 1. Kinship Harmony Tradition effect on Demotion Time increased from minus 25 to minus 75 because it is so tedious waiting for people to demote and you have that unemployed icon there just sitting there and you go and look and it's why haven't you taken a lesser job yet? Get on with it. So that's good. Supremacy Adoption effect no longer increases Starways capacity by plus 2. Shame. Instead increases Naval capacity by plus 20. Okay. Fair. I think in most cases people prefer more naval capacity. Um, anchorages are still a thing, but even so. Here's an interesting one. Trade policies are now locked behind the adaptive economic policies mercantile tradition. If you're anything like me, one of the first things you do when you start a new game is you go to trade policies and you switch it to... Um, marketplace of ideas to get that unity boost. Um, if you're anything like me in the last game I played, you later trade, tra change it so that you actually are not losing consumer goods because... Ouch. Um, now you will not be able to do that until and unless you take the mercantile tree. It's just going to be straight money, which you can then use to buy consumer goods. Um, but that's interesting. That's going to make it interesting for... You don't get much unity out of it, but it's going to make it inter it's quarter of a unity for one trade value. Well, it could be interesting for a unity rush build. Uh, rebalanced pop costs for Caravaneer events to re better reflect pop growth changes, and pop rewards and costs of various different events just to, again, reflect better, better reflect the population growth changes. The population requirements for Executive Retreat and Xeno Outreach Agency have been reduced. Prosperity Traditions Finisher no longer provides merchant jobs or gestalt jobs, but rather increases planet stability by plus 5 and pop resource output by plus 5. Excellent. I like more pop resource output. Just global pop resource output. Specialist, leader, worker. Ah, well. Reworked and rebalanced how some rare events are fired. Repeatedly entering and exiting systems will no longer eventually guarantee certain events. Horizon Signal, it was nice knowing you. I may never see you again. I never spammed it, but, like, I wasn't telling people to avoid black hole systems. Uh, tweaked the carrying capacity formula to make housing usage modifiers more useful again. Instead of taking total housing, it now takes total pops plus three housing. Uh, reduced benefit orbital stations and starbase constructions received from technologies when gathering research resources. So, that's the updates, I presume, which say mining stations, research stations, produce more. So, reducing that benefit is just going to slow your economy down a little. Depends how much for changes. Yeah. 
Uh, planetary designations providing build cost modifiers now instead provide upkeep modifiers much more useful because when you've built up a planet, it has this designation which is doing basically nothing. Upkeep is actually an ongoing benefit. Urban world designation reduces the upkeep of buildings and districts instead of affecting industrial district cost. Refinery... Uh, wait, we rewind. Uh, yes, no, that makes sense. Hold on, isn't that but Refinery de designation increases production rather than reducing upkeep. Added an industrial world planetary designation produces, providing reduced benefits to both alloy and consumer good production but doesn't shift jobs. The existing industrial world is renamed Factory World. So you, the moment you have Forge World and Industrial World, um, which one of the other basically favours either consumer goods or alloys and shifts the job that isn't the favoured one to the favoured one. So you can go all in on, on alloys or all in on consumer goods. They've now given a middle of the road planetary designation for a planet focusing on both and renamed the existing designation. Automatic planetary designation selection will no longer be quite so sure that refinery worlds are what you really need more than anything else right now. Would you like some refinery worlds? Shattered rings have had a big change. The starting segment is now a size 25 habitable world with normal districts. It's just a planner. Uh, when you restore the ring world, um, housing, generator, trade, industrial, and farming districts will convert to ring world districts at a 5 to 1 ratio. Um, so it starts as a normal world until you can actually restart, restore it when you have mega engineering and a bunch of alloys. Uh, I assume the likelihood of you getting mega engineering isn't, it hasn't changed because you still have a ring world in your systems. So. Buildings and districts that add biotrophy jobs no longer add to carrying capacity since having biotrophies that use no housing will now increase carrying capacity already. That's just to balance out some of the changes we talked about earlier. Reduced exorbitant fees for using Golden Rule Federation elections, i.e. the money you get from distributing or appropriating the pot, now more closely corresponds to the pot. So that's just one of the election types is now easier and or cheaper. Uh, industrial districts on a planet that becomes an humanopolis convert into foundry archaeologies and factory archaeologies depending on the planet designation. Um, as opposed to just dumping it all into forges, I believe it was. Hey, new mouse. The final level of capital building unlocks all four corporate building slots up from three, presumably because the way it happens now, uh, one of the four for a corporate or branch office, one of the four building slots is based on the host empire having a tradition perk unlocked um, which is now no longer a likely guarantee so now they'll get all four of those buildings open when they get their final capital building uh, judgment core domination tradition no longer increases crime prevention rather makes enforcers produce one unity interesting okay domination tradition finisher no longer increases influence Monthly influence gained by plus one rather increases admin cap by 20% for all empires. Okay. Of course, because you don't really need to increase crime prevention. Crime prevention is easy. Get something good out of it instead. Um, the colonial viceroy's domination tradition now also increases monthly influence by half. Um, so... You've got a bit less total influence gain out of it, but you can still get some influence gain out of the domination tradition and a plus 20% admin cap. Yeah, okay. Sacrificial temples are now limited to five per planet. That's probably sensible. Halve the materials from mining the interloper, which is the asteroid in the shattered ring system, and replace the mineral deposit on the, the irreparable damage, which is your shattered ring segment you can't repair, with an engineering research deposit. Rogue Servitor Industrial Habitat Districts will no longer provide artisan jobs, but can still access the jobs by activating the Factory Habitat Colony destination designation. Okay, sure. Cave Cleaner is now a worker tier job rather than specialist, makes sense. Gas Plant Engineer job is now less attractive. 
racket destroyer deal cost increase from 200 to 2000 minerals which is slightly more reasonable for here free destroyer no construction time no alloy cost hive mines can now purge other hive populations again thank you um they must remain pure and one of course added so you can terraform a tomb world to a gaia world directly if you have the correct prerequisites as opposed to having to do it terraform it into literally anything else and then to a gaia world uh, made it so empires can't get worthless buildings from reverse engineering arcane technologies they are the balance changes now onto performance and stability there's only a few here added a sanity check to prevent a possible crash when closing the game during gameplay good I like avoiding crashes. Extended the timeout for clients to respond to the start game message. They wouldn't be kicked out of the session by the host. Good. Fixed an out of sync error on hot join. Yay. Fair pain. Significantly reduced the freeze caused by spawning the L gate and significantly reduced the performance burden of the auto migration system. Optimizations and crash avoidance all around, basically. UI has a fair number. Uh, change the humming ambient sound in the main menu to the ambient category and following that volume setting. Indicated in the UI as to how likely pops are to escape your current purge type so long as the chance is not 0% or 100% for the purge tooltips that show up. I know some people who will be personally be saved by this. There is no longer a close button on diplomatic events so you can no longer accidentally close important decisions by hitting escape in case you were trying to save at the same time it appeared. So my friends will be delighted. In the PopZell action within the planet interface, you can see how much of the output comes from buildings, such as the mineral processing centers, which have like a plus 15 or plus 5 or whatever percent for efficiency, and how much e upkeep comes from edicts. So you can see a breakdown of why that, where all of the numbers are coming from a bit more. Various job modifiers improved to indicate stock alternatives and similar variations. Left hand navigation bar remains in collapsed state when the mouse is left hovering after making a menu choice. You can now click the lock icon when the nav bar is in an expanded state. Um, helpful. Switch the presentation order of alloys and consumer goods in various places to match the order in the top bar. Just again, UI stuff. Um, it's just cleaner, neater, makes more sense, more consistency. Clearer information when you will next be able to use certain espionage operations in the tooltips. Again, more information. Information on the next elevation ceremony for necrophages is on the tooltips of the relevant buildings. Several errors, several errors in tooltip for setting or unsetting forced assembly species. Uh, yeah, I've seen that one. Uh, UI for Operation Sabotage Starbase fixes. Tells you the game tells you the game is ready to start in a hot joining interface when previously there was no message after synchronizing the game. Basically, you'll now know when the host is the one who's holding everyone up as opposed to someone being slow to connect. I'm going to get yelled at in Discord now. Food from deposits should now be possible to see on the map. Hyperlane opacity slider defaulting to 0.3. This is something which I think a lot of people have wanted for a while. There's numerous mods. I use a mod for hyperlane opacity. Uh, there is now a slider for it so you can customize it yourself. Um, clone Vat's building is sorted under pop assembly in the building list um, and tweaked the colours of restricted system names to be slightly more readable. They go sort of darkish red, it's a bit hard to read on the dark background, so good. AI. The AI will now cancel espionage operations for which it lacks the available resources. Uh, they can build four to six construction and science ships depending on how well we're doing financially, meaning some empires will expand and have their mining stations quicker than others. They should upgrade their fleets during peacetime as opposed to simply going, oh shit, um, and panicking when you attack them. Uh, they'll now wait 15 years before they fully take over a player if the player leaves a multiplayer game um, and improve that behavior. So there's no naval bonuses from difficulty, no colonization after takeover, no building destruction, no build army construction, no starbase and starbase module construction, no buying and selling pops, um, and various code updates about building caps um, just various considerations um, for um, I've taken over for a player they might actually want to come back and that whole scale is also stretched to 15 years I believe it was 10 before 
um, and various tweaks there in the sub menus. Um, economic plans fixed for Hive and Gestalt. We don't know what they're doing. That's worrying because I have an AI which shows up in my games, which is dangerous in itself. Firing swarm. Uh, AI now compares more about energy and alloys, and there's a building limit to find. AI can propose targeted galactic communicate community. Targeted galactic community resolutions, even if they do not have terrible or excellent opinion of the target. Change the way that AI rate of galactic community resolutions is affected by opinion towards target and proposer, so it is multiplicative instead of additive. So basically, they're more likely to do stuff which isn't just let's sanction people, let's add sanctions, can we have more sanctions? What about sanctions? Um, we'll get something else. Uh, the amount of saved credits will go up, more bank, uh, allow 10% over admin cap as opposed to panicking immediately or just ignoring it completely. Uh, they won't build star bases if they're not rich enough. Um, various consolidated plans and sub plans for economy. Um, and it will not just build research facilities and crush its consumer goods economy. Modding we're going to skip. Um, if you're not interested in modding, this will mean nothing to you. If you are interested in modding, it will mean something to you, but you won't need to hear it from me because you'll understand it more than I do. There's a lot of modding changes. Bug fixes. Good news. We are halfway down the page. Fixed some cases. Hold on. Bug fixes section. Fixed some cases where someone else opening the L cluster would cause the related situation log entry to stick around forever. The tidy up, basically. Archaeology sites and espionage operations now correctly use the difficulty of the current stage rather than that of the last stage. Thank you. Hmm. Reinforcement fleets get removed when destroyed. A lot of tidy ups, basically. Colony ships not being affected by ship construction modifiers, which is a bit unhelpful because. You can get a lot of ship construction modifiers throughout the game, and a colony ship is just ignoring them. Unhelpful. Fixed number of tags in the soundtrack DLC's files. Remove the negative void dweller trait, trait, preventing players from genetically modifying species to avoid penalties. Remove the hidden event, therefore, to flip the traits. Uh, made it so only organics get taxed with a growth discouraged decision. Scions can no longer stay out of a war in heaven if their overlord goes to war. That makes sense. Overlords. War. War. Nah. Nope. No more. Lipoid craters no longer get removed when terraforming into hive worlds. You make that crater, you live with it. Someone else makes that crater, you still live with it. Fix the non-localized tooltip. Calamitous Birth can no longer stack multiple Lithoid Craters or Buried Lithoids. That was a bit of an exploit where you could get a lot of pops relatively cheaply and quite quickly. Um, no longer doable. Fix a typo in the Sanctuary of Oppose. If you ever reforge your Doomsday Homeworld, it will no longer have a Doomsday modifier. Yay, we've reforged our homeworld! Boom. Again. The Stolts will now quickly stamp out crime because it doesn't affect them, because that implies free will. Nanites can never spawn on terraformable worlds. Shielded planets won't show up in the event art for pacifying a habitat. Shorten the Voidborn description so it fits inside the Ascension Perk UI. Good. Messenger project not being visible on the galaxy map. Good, good. Just various, again, tidy up fixes. Um, city sizes on the planetary view now increase faster to account for recent changes to pop growth. Replaced certain parts of localization um, as appropriate. Point defense will no longer ignore missiles if strike craft are present on the battlefield. They'll actually do their job. Non Gestalt empires are no longer able to colonize with Gestalt pops when you're in a federation. Which, yeah, makes sense. Fixed it not being possible to issue move orders to explore and survey the systems while having only science ships selected. Hold on. Not being possible to issue move orders to explore. Ah, right, yes. So, being unable to send a science ship to a place you've already been to, you can now do that again. Um, ele interface elements using hard coded strings instead of translated text. A lot of just language friendly stuff. 
the cube event is more gestalt friendly. If you swap from organic to artificial population assembly, you now lose all progress in math assembly because half grown people and half built robots don't help anybody. Uh, fixed you finding an encryption key on your own empire for the second time. That's been fixed previously and wasn't. Target uplink computer effect now will actually apply to defense platforms. I use target uplink computers a lot. Thanks. Added weightings missing from a fanatical purifier's name parts list. Cool. Again, a lot of minor fixes which are just irritating. Um, issues with synchronized localization entry entries for pop faction names using the correct strings and now rendering in simplified Chinese. Contact report remnants now happens when you encounter a ruined megastructure. Ministry of Culture now shows the right job description if you're a machine empire. Job priority tooltip is more clear. Earth custodianship is not locked behind the human ideal C. Addressed issues with various synchronized localization entries for empire names. Random names for empires including hive minds, necrophages, fanatical purifiers and corporate authorities will now use the connect correct strings and rendered in simplified Chinese. And ascended synthetic spiritualists if you manage to get an Ascended Synthetic Spiritualist, you will no longer outlaw your own rulers. I'm illegal! Dismantle me! They leave a space here for the Griever. I appreciate that. We're getting through it. Fix the wrong event text. Uh, being displayed for the grassy militia 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 anomaly event um, claim distance cost modifier now considers wormholes even if borders are closed because closing borders when it's a wormhole really doesn't matter because it's very hard to close and lock a wormhole it's a giant hole in space time it doesn't have a key um, good updated first contact protocols um, tip tooltips to actually to more accurately reflect the actual effects. Consistency in map mode names, good. Fix an instance where crisis factions couldn't reach their offensive targets and got stuck. Reinforcing fleets will now arrive and attempt to merge even if a target fleet is in combat. They get very confused if they can't merge when we get where they're going, it just sort of breaks. Fix jobs about employment cap being listed as X employed out of minus one available slots in the job breakdown tooltip. <laughs> Sprawling slums accurately reflects what happens when you clear it. Repealing resolution is not working properly. Or just various. These are just, again, it's bug fixes. It's various just handy things. Repealing the fourth resolution under the mutual defense category now makes proper reference to the castigation proclamation rather than the military readiness act. Fix the prioritized and deprioritized indicators on pop job assignment icons blocking mouse inputs so you can click everywhere again. Fixed colony designations, including pre-sapient pops, when evaluating pop limitations for a potential trigger. Yay. Fixed crash, when using the add pops command. Cheating. Well, it's not really. It's a console command. They put it in there. You can use it if you want to. Um, corrected capitalization in descriptive text for organic sanctuaries and organic paradises. Several issues relating to planets to play, displaying negative available jobs. Doesn't that just mean unemployment? Fixed auto pause not working for anomalies if auto unpause was enabled. Uh, fixed the on your shoulders of giants origin, sometimes starting you in a solar system with too many planets. Rebalance likelihood of certain rare events from occurring. Good things. Starting with Void Dwellers or Shattered Ring, as well as Reanimators, now starts your Empire off with a um, Dread Encampment. Because Void Dweller and Shattered Ring start with such a customised start. Yeah, they have to make the exception now. Fixed it not being possible to enact the Create Resort World decision after the appeal event. Fixed cases, such as lithoid necrophages, where species would repeatedly start assembling or growing and then cancel after the next monthly tip. Fixed some cases where necrophages would cause regular pop growth during purging. Um, again, numerous just fixes to stuff which has been around for a while but hasn't ever got fixed. It's warm and sweaty sticky. 
Yay. Fixed issues of the po portrait tooltip in Empire Creation, sometimes being empty or containing empty lines. Just UI tidying, it's good. Fixed randomized ruler name not always working, even though it should be, because the it thinks you haven't met the requirements, but you have, which is mostly choosing a name list, I believe. Fixed it being possible to open DLC landing pages during hot block, hot join and breaking UI flow and breaking the game. Um, template list and fleet manager sometimes get stuck in a scrolled state when a template was removed. That's the error I think it was. Finally. Industrial world and industrial habitat designation. No longer attempt to move boundary drone jobs for rogue servitors. May now target fabricator jobs. Makes sense, because they don't have boundary drones, they have fabricators. Wait. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Fixed construct mining station tooltip showing maintenance on energy mining stations. Good. I mean, every station costs like one energy, but an energy mining station is already mining energy. Why would it cost energy? It powers itself. Fixed pop sometimes staying in jobs that no longer existed after you changed the colony designation. Hive minds perceive the living sea event with bespoke event text rather than seeing the same events which are granted to normal people. Fixed the go to button for the unit lost event, made it so diplomatic core that it's ridiculed expires after 3600 days, 10 years. I don't know how long it took before or if it just didn't expire. But now it expires after 10 years. Forge and Factory World designations now remember that there is in fact a third tier of those buildings. Hmm. I assume it wasn't accounting for them with regards to the perks um, and stuff. Missing strings of random names for supremacist and technologist pop factions. Icon for picking a colony next designation is no longer a robotic cow. Uh, the robotic cow will now be used correctly for machine fringe planets. Humiliated modifier now has a negative icon. Sure. Some people like it. I'm not judging. Uh, leisure, leisure districts are no longer provide housing for rogue servitors. Tooltips for organic sanctuary buildings and leisure districts for rogue servitors have additional information about their jobs. Rogue servitors are a very weird empire type. There's a lot of weird stuff which can go weird there. So, yeah. Uh, made it so you cannot stack multiple missing tree of life modifiers by trading systems. You only get the ben well the uh, modifiers from that once. Updated the tooltips of Ministry of Culture to be more appropriate for the stults. Again, just making it a bit more just the tooltips as they say, not the mechanics. So no actual mechanical change. It just all reads better. It's clear. Made it so the infested world counter correctly updates when destroying a system with a star eater. Good. The three lipoid rare resource traits you can use are being have been reworded to be clearer. Uh, Rebalanced the number of pops you need to gain certain event jobs, because there's some things which will still like give you one special job for every like 50 pops or something, and it's just like you're never accomplishing that on these planets anymore. You need to actually, yeah, just balance that down for lower number of overall pops. Event unit lost makes proper references to the fleet affected. Mars sometimes misses the terraforming candidate when soul spawns naturally. Fix that. Machine world preference uses the actual correct icon. Uh, consistency issues with discovery traditions recalled exploration and French. Tooltip for collective reasoning tradition. Various instances of an invalid apostrophe appearing in localized text. Being impossible to communicate with caravaneers in certain circumstances isn't that ideal? Question mark. Hmm. Uh, fixed exploitable planets trigger always returning false and it's tooltip just again various fixes I mean this is a bug fixes section what do you expect tooltips for invalid species traits highlighted in red in empire creation uh, repair fleet orders not being carried out to completion if placed in a queue that was irritating I like that I fixed that unused icon uh, implemented unused icon for titan icons for titan ship components I look forward to seeing that uh, uncolonized habitats will mysteriously turn into shattered world when star eaters happened or the epiphasic engine became a thing. DLC icons being accessed in multiplayer empire selection. 
is that not supposed to happen? Okay. Uh, adjust it. Oh, I suppose because it doesn't make any difference to what you have unless you have a host. Unsure. Adjust. Yeah. Adjust it a response string for spiritualist upon completion of first contact, preventing a name reference from exceeding its bounds. Localization string if your request to form a federation timed out has been fixed. References to tiles in collateral damages tooltips. Tiles is going way back. Hmm. As death cults, you no longer lose effects from active sacrifices if you temporarily cease to have any mortal initiates, for example, by sacrificing them all. Helpful. Various event spawned leaders lacking certain traits they should have had based on their species, including a psionic and erudite, that have been fixed. Modifiers to district build speed are no longer being applied to tooltips. No. Modifiers to district build speed are now being applied to tooltips when you choose to build them. Fix that. I feel like I got that one wrong, but okay. Academic privilege living standards tooltip was missing the convenient information that it produces plus 10% pop research output. That now says that. Uh, machine synchronicity tradition and a few others uh, would only take effect after a delay. They now take effect immediately. Issues with the life finds a way event not doing what the tooltip said. Fixed. Misleading tooltip of the Oracle Nexus event. Um, clarified some matters in the memorialist civic tooltip. Slaver control. AI slaver controlled. AI slave. No. AI controlled slaver guilds should now actually colonize planets. Oh, I've missed a trick there. I should have put myself in a game against all AIs from Slaver Guilds. Fix the rare issue where you could have a plus minus one skill bonus in first contact skill tooltips. Clear planets and asteroid bolt from a shattered ring system. Uh, fix a wrong ethics reference in Polish localization. Made the tradition of faith in science have a less misleading tooltip. Fix the leader class skill modifiers applying to multiple or all leader classes instead of just the one they are meant to apply to. A bit of a shame. Mm -hmm. But also, would that actually have been breaking? I suppose it would have done. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Then. Fix traditions that refund you the cost of demolishing buildings to properly refund you if you manually demolish or downgrade buildings using the planet interface. Isn't that the only way you demolish and downgrade buildings? Okay. All colony designations of the appropriate type will now gain benefits and resolutions such as environmental ordinance waivers. Fix buildings of a queued upgrade in progress being counted twice towards building count limits. It is no longer possible to shift criminals to worker jobs by manually prioritizing the worker job. I know you're busy doing crime, but if you could just come over here and do this instead, that would be great, thanks. Fixed it being possible to retain species rights that have been made invalid by a change in government type or civics. Fair. Made it so the hologram planet anomaly can no longer spawn on planets of already existing dig sites. Yes, <laughs> that's how how did that happen? Uh, the totalitarian faction will now be happy if you have the Slaver Guild Civic, which makes sense. Uh, agrarian ideal civic properly adds two farming districts to your homeworld. Purging every primitive on a planet now remove the stellar culture shock modifier because there's no one left on the planet to have culture shock. The ruler of the Galactic Imperium is no longer blocked from getting the subjugation war god Cassus Belli, when they kindly offer protectorate status to another empire. Kindly. Hive worlds no longer have access to both the Forge world and the Hive world foundry colony designation. Upon invading a Ketling primitive world, the associated special project will now be removed from the situation model. Fix fungoid research station model to remove hole in Seledna. Passing Space Amoeba Protection Act resolution will no longer allow you to pass the Tianki Conservation Act again. Um, passing either of the two Tianki um, Acts will fulfill passing resolution in Galactic Focus. 
fixed cases of a cooldown for finding archaeology sites in quick succession would be triggered even though no archaeology was site was found. Um, fix you getting unsuitable arc sites in the L cluster? I don't... Oh, archaeology. Right. Duh! Void dwellers are now correctly given starting resources depending on species and ethics. It's always good. Here, lipoids, have food. Wait, what? <laughs> Fixed not being able to provoke nominated galactic market planets if the relocation vote was ongoing. If Shard is defeated, the relevant event change rubricator will be removed from all other nations. The what separates us event will no longer fire if the other species are robots. Pool more negative added a more negative icon to the failed savior modifier. For when your original icon just isn't modify isn't negative enough. Reshifting Sam's event now properly gives a boost to physics research. Lost to bureaucracy, bureaucracy event will no longer create planetary features after thin air when you clear the blockers spawn. Shame. Reintroduced gaining menace from turning a world into a tomb world via bombardment, because why wouldn't you want to glass a planet? Uh, fixed defense platforms not being destroyed when dismantling a starbase. <laughs> Modified mesh to resolve Z fighting between ring world sections. Enclave text boxes now reset correctly between messages. Makes sense. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, that's sensible. Um, fix an issue where you could take in care of an ear pops, even if your policies would automatically purge them. Oh, so you can't just welcome people directly into the death chambers. Okay, that seems fair. Fixed merchant guilds not giving enough jobs from the Imperial Palace building. Dimensional horror shows on the gal gal bl 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 Dimensional horror now shows on the galaxy map. Repeal crisis resolutions are no longer missing an icon. Fix the bug that allowed you to gain menace by repeatedly vassalizing and releasing the same empire. Oh well. Uh, fixed it being possible to open ship details for strange vessels via the fleet manager. Missing icon to the study hive mind drones modifier has been added. Preferred Bale archaeology site sometimes when its form maps fixed. You gain visibility on the systems where you know the next Bale or Zroni arc site will, archaeology site will be if you have never been there before rather than having to guess where they are. There's a lot of good little fixes for little, most of which are edge cases, but not all of them. Fixed army transport fleets sometimes for getting fleet stance and control group information when embarking. Land appropriation and automatic resettlement now respect wherever a species is allowed to live on the planet, and therefore will not resettle organics onto machine worlds where they cannot breathe. Reanimators is now fully incompatible with synthetic ascension rather than just quietly doing nothing. Prosperity traditions, interstellar franchising, and public words works, and their variants are now fully informative of which districts they actually help. Um, unemployed lithoids will no longer move back to a doomed home world through auto migration, even if there are lots of jobs and housing available because everyone has left. Notifications for refused peace officers offer, offers about words are now properly removed when a war ends. Various error log messages relating to crises and several edge cases where rewards are not granted when they should be. Stop the automatic picker for assembling species from picking obsolete species with fewer traits. Basically, it's not going to pick a worse version. Alternates, sure, but not worse ones. Based, presumably based just on trait count, which could be interesting. Because some traits... Or maybe it's based on trait points, which would make more sense. Because you get stuff like Very Strong, which is an expensive one. Or Ultra Habitable. Fixed lipoids using a biological pop growth modifiers can determine whether they should be more likely to be picked as the next species to be grown. Fix the case where a fallen empire can send you multiple demands to change your ways if you didn't answer them fast enough. That's a bad way to piss an empire off. Pop self modification chain that will no longer pit modified species against modified species. Vassals created by the Galactic Sovereign no longer believe they are also Galactic Sovereigns. There can be only one. Fix a too long string, cutting off invader power values in the ground combat unit in French. 
issue where destroying contingency's final world of Astari would not properly end the contingency crisis. You blew up the star. It's probably dead. Updated numbers in espionage operation tooltips to show correct information. An issue where nomads would keep asking for planet over and over and over and over again. Then established communications. Port enforcement tech is researchable with Utopia DLC. Uh, that's one which boosts stability and reduces ethical drift, I believe. Fixed a crash upon mousing over a system of planets in as an observer. Nice to see observer mode getting a little bit of love there. Uh, fixed a couple of edicts having the wrong deactivation cost. A tooltip where you can't reinforce a fleet shouldn't duplicate the cause. In case you weren't reading it properly the first time, it's not going to make much difference making you read it twice. Fleets can be reinforced even if one ship type in the fleet can't be built. It will reinforce what it can, basically. Adjusted for term use in French to refer to empires who oppose galactic community resolutions. Um, further fixes to the end of Cybrex precursor chain. Cool. Uh, some model fixes. You can no longer invite someone you are at war against to join your side in a new war. So we'll keep fighting here, but shall we fight together over here? Yeah, no. <coughs> Corrected opinion tax placement and declare war view. Uh, grammar fixes to a normal event drift and event the discovery of alien life. The manifesti faction should no longer be formed after it has disbanded either through suppression or lack of popularity. That should fix the errors with manifesti, where it just gets stuck forever, we'll see. Fixed several cases where Voltram, Ute, First League, Erasian, and Cyberx precursor trains would not end properly if someone else found the home world first. Yep, I've had that. It's unhelpful. Research Institute was not properly converting to planetary supercomputer. It now will, when conquered by a Gestalt and the inverse. Uh, auto resettlement to Void Dweller. Habitats in certain other planets is now fixed. That specifically will need a new save. I'll say something about it at the end. Uh, fix the typo in the ruined world archaeology chain. Uh, spelling error in restored warship. Excess unemployment caused by the cave cleaner job being too attractive. Hmm. Fixed an issue of branch office value tooltips could be displayed based on the wrong branch office owner. That's funny. Uh, value generated from criminal jobs for branch offices. Properly shown in the tooltip for your value. Typos. Literally unplayable. Fixed crash on the sector colony development update. Missing tooltips for increased decrease buttons in monthly trade view. Hyperlane registrar should now be unlocked with the correct technology. Hive mines can no longer assemble non-hive pops from spawning pools. It's funny for some reason. The colonizable planet icon should no longer disappear when a ship leaves an unsurveyed system. Yes! So, if I'm doing a very fast find my planets, I'll send science ships through systems to explore but not survey until I find what I need. But if you're not looking at the galaxy map in that area when they're in the system, you don't see what's there. Now that will no longer be an issue. Victorious ground troops will no longer embark automatically if our hostile military fleets present in the system or hide on the planet where they may or may not be safe. You can't upgrade defense platforms when the Starbase is fighting. Fixed fleet oh shame. Fixed fleet speed being dictated by the first ship in the fleet instead of the slowest one. That is a bit of a shame, I'll be honest. German translation for Archimeter, typo in Han species name, German text overlaps. Broken text references in the Pirate Haven Destroyed event. Planetary deposit interfaces not showing triggered modifiers as icons fixed. Fixed view jump distance counting not always finding the short. Fixed jump distance counting. There we are. Not always finding the shortest path. Okay. Fixed cases where event options with random effects were often not as random as they should be. Which one should we pick? You could get any one of these. Oh, it's Vatican. Updated some neural slug events for hive mind empires, and when you play as the Commonwealth of Man, the UNE will now always spawn correctly again. Thus, concluding the patch notes for 3.1. Uh, 3.1 will release on Tuesday, which is like soon. Uh, it is the 14th, um, presumably the same time it normally does, which is sort of mid early, mid early afternoon UK time. Um, it is free to everybody, 
there is a general expectation many of these changes especially stuff related to galaxy generation how that works many of these changes will probably not work properly in existing save games so there's a good chance you will need to start a new game to get many of these um buffs and fixes and stuff which is probably just a sensible suggestion all around so that would just be the thing to do um yeah pretty much i hope you enjoy Stellaris. 3.1 lem this is the first release from the custodians they are aiming to release a patch for custodian, custodian patch about once every three months this one is bigger than what will be coming in the future because they have had longer to work on it future custodian patches will not be this big so don't go getting all excited uh, separate to custodians, the new content team are still working on stuff. We have no news about that whatsoever. But for now, it's all about the free stuff. Pretty much. Have a good rest of your day, night, morning, evening, afternoon. I don't know. Enjoy it, whatever it is you're doing. Bye bye. <laughs>